Hey guys, so today we're going to be talking about the newest horror movie release, Firestarter. Now, I am not going to lie, I was not excited about this one. I don't think I saw a full trailer, but I did see some teaser trailers through like advertisements and things, and it just did not look good to me, and it I mean, I don't know, I didn't see the full thing, so can't really judge based on the trailer, but it just, it's not my thing. I don't know, I just didn't, I wasn't excited. I'd never seen the original, so I really just wasn't into it. It didn't look like a movie that I would be really excited about or really love, so. However, I did go ahead and watch the original Firestarter from 1984, which, fun fact, uh, John Carpenter was actually hired originally as the director for the original Firestarter as he was working on the thing but then when the thing underperformed financially at the box office because as we know it did not become a cult classic until later in you know in the years in the decades um, because at first it flopped it was not a good movie people did not receive it very well but after it underperformed he was fired off of the project of Firestarter and they hired someone else so I think that was a big mistake obviously in hindsight and maybe they think that too I don't know that doesn't really have anything to do with this movie however John Carpenter did actually actually do the score of the new Firestarter of the movie we're talking about today. So he did eventually get to work on a Firestarter movie. I did think it was a little bit random when I saw his name pop up as the score um, with Cody Carpenter as well. And I was a little confused. I was like, that seems a little random, but sure, I guess he can do random projects like this. But now that I know that he was supposed to originally direct the first Firestarter movie, it kind of makes a little bit more sense. And John Carpenter, hands down, it makes some of the best scores in the horror genre period so I get why they would want to hire him. So the new Firestarter is actually considered more of a reboot of the original Firestarter from 1984, of course, both based on the novel by Stephen King. So more of a reboot than a direct remake of the original. They did change some things from the original movie. Also, I have not read the book, so I can't give that perspective on the book to film adaptation on either of the movies. But since I did watch the original, I'll kind of compare the two a little bit and share my thoughts a little bit on the first one as well. Also, let's do no spoilers. I just don't feel like doing spoilers today for this video. There's really nothing to talk about. There is one scene that I will talk about more in detail and I'll do that at the very end. So if you want to skip it, if you're worried about it spoiling, um, you can. I'll warn you ahead of time, but it's just a scene that really doesn't matter to the major plot of the movie, so you can stick around if you want. So Firestarter follows a couple who are desperately trying to hide their daughter Charlie from a federal agency who wants to utilize her power of fire for mass destruction. As she gets older, it gets harder and harder to control the fire. I will say I do like the concept. I think the book would sound really cool. Um, very Stephen King-esque. I think the story is, you know, very Stephen King. And like usual, I'll start what I liked about the movie first, and then we'll get into what I dislike liked about it. So the first major addition that I noticed between the original and this one is the addition of the story of the mom because in the first one she dies early on so we really don't get a lot of her backstory and the mom in the new one kind of becomes a non-character anyway but uh, we do get a little bit more of her story which I did like. I liked that we got to see more of her character and relevance in the overall plot. I think they did try to make it a little bit too complicated because there was multiple storylines going on at this point um, when you throw in the story of the mom and some of that story was just a little bit confusing and I think a little over complicated like they didn't really need to go into that storyline as much as they did. I enjoyed that it was a little bit more explained than the first one, but I don't know if it was really necessary. Some of the lines uh, from this one were word for word from the original, which I think was a nice homage to the original. So I enjoyed that, especially coming off of just watching the original, like the day or two before I watched the remake or the reboot rather. Um, it was kind of cool to see those lines translate into the new one. So I like that they kind of kept a little bit of the original in the uh, reboot, uh, not much else, but they did obviously change a lot of things to modernize it because it takes place in modern day. So obviously there's some different technology going on. Um, yeah, just different kind of government uh, agencies. I don't know. Now the score was hands down 
the best thing about this movie. Dare I say it was fire. Sorry, that was really bad. But it was really good. It was classic John Carpenter. I mean, he can make a score like no other. He does some of my favorite scores of all time. Obviously, I mentioned that. Um, so his score for this movie was incredible. And I really think this would have been a million times worse had it not had the score that it did. It almost saved it. Like it almost made it a good movie because the score was so impactful in certain scenes. I was really into it, uh, into the score, not the movie. And that is where the good parts of this movie stop. Uh, it's just not a good movie. I don't think this movie is good even if you liked the original, I don't think it's good if you've never seen the original. I don't think it's good if you're a fan of the book or if you've never read it. All around, overall, not a very well executed movie and just kind of, it's just not great. I'm really glad it was released to stream on Peacock because I was really nervous I would actually have to go to the theater to watch it, which that sounds such, such like a first world problem complaint. Um, but I just wasn't excited about it. So the fact that I would have to like go to the theater just to watch it, was kind of like draining me already. So I'm glad that they put it on Peacock so I could just watch it at home. Um, it Cause it was, it was kind of boring, not gonna lie. Now I'm not a huge fan of the original one either. I think I gave it three out of five. Um, if, I don't know, I'm just not super drawn to 80s movies anyway. I will say though, I just watched Christine for the first time. Why, why have I never watched that? I wrote that movie off completely as being really silly and blown away love christine maybe because john carpenter directed it maybe if he directed the original firestarter it would have been better hmm. i think the original one had its moments like it was okay uh it was enjoyable at times but it it just wasn't my movie and i don't know if that was a good thing or a bad thing to go into the reboot with that in mind um probably a good thing because if i really loved the original they stray a lot from the original in the reboot so maybe that would have been a negative um so if you're a big fan of this I, I just don't think anyone uh, would really enjoy this movie. Like, I don't want to say that no one, obviously. But if you're a fan of the original, not sure if you'd love this. Also, what I've heard from other horror creators who have read the book is that this movie does not even come close to many aspects of the book or what make the book so great. Um, they say the book's really good and these movies just do not do the book justice. I actually do have one more positive regarding the movie is the ending location and the end scene. I'm not gonna spoil anything, but I do find that the ending in the original is a little bit repetitive. Like I get it, she shoots fireballs, you know what I mean? Um, and, and the ending in this one is just a little bit more dynamic with the locations and her use of her powers and things like that. It just mixes it up a little bit more. Not enough to save it, but it could have been worse. Also, I don't really love the casting of this one, of the reboot. Um, just generally personal opinion, I'm not a huge fan of Zac Efron in anything. So him playing the dad wasn't really into that. And I think it could have been better with a different cast. The script itself was still pretty lackluster, but I think Zac Efron, in my opinion, just made it a little bit worse and it, it could have been uh, avoided. Also, I do wanna warn you, there is animal harm in this, like an animal death in this, and was not a fan of that. Thought I was gonna have to fast forward, wish I did. Um, that wasn't fun, and I don't, I know that's not, you know, gonna bother everybody, and it's like the horror genre ha is full of that kind of stuff. I find horror novels tend to go that route too a lot, which is not my cup of tea, even though you see the troop over here, and the deep, both animal harm, but, it, I, I don't know. I think that the reboot pushed it a little bit farther. They are both rated R. Um, honestly, I feel like this could have passed with a PG-13 rating, and I know that might be a little bit controversial because it already wasn't good, and the things that we have going for it need an R rating, um, like the gore and the animal deaths and things. Um, that could have been omitted completely, the animal stuff. Um, but the gore was good, I will say. I enjoyed that they pushed it a little bit more. You get to see like people burning which you see in the original but you don't really see a lot of the aftermath of that also I did not enjoy the main antagonist in this movie I just felt she was a little boring I don't know if it was her line delivery if it was the actor they chose for that role um, but she was just not interesting enough or believable enough in that role and i don't know it's again maybe a personal thing i just didn't enjoy her as the main antagonist she didn't seem that threatening you know what i mean okay so the last criticism i have of this is one major element of cheese 
in this that I thought could have been an homage to the kind of 80s campiness of the original. Maybe they were trying to harness some of that classic 80s horror cheesiness. And I wish that was the case. I'm not, I'm sure, still not sure if it was, if they were really going for that or if it was just in a bad way, like cheesiness in a bad way because they weren't really self-aware. I'm still not sure, I can't really read it properly because it's really only this one scene where we have this really campy moment that reads like an 80s movie. So I don't know if it was just supposed to be in that one scene. I don't know. So I'm gonna tell you the line verbatim of what they say in the movie. Literally made me laugh out loud uh, and not in a good way. It wasn't like, oh, I'm having fun. It was like, why did they do that? You can skip the rest of the video if you think it might be a spoiler for you. I'm gonna tell you it's really not um, a spoiler. It's just, I'm telling you something that happens directly in the movie. So if you wanna not know everything, I don't even recommend this movie to begin with. So I think it's one that the general people can skip because not everyone's really gonna love this. I really don't know who would love this. Like, I would love to know if you did enjoy this movie. Leave a comment and tell me why, or if you're a fan of the original, or if you're a fan of the book. Um, I just wanna know who this was for. Like, why was this made? Why? What was the purpose of remaking this one? You know what I wouldn't hate being remade? I know I'm going off track a little bit. We'll get back to the line in a second. What I wouldn't hate being remade, another Stephen King adaptation, is Misery. I've, I'm just wondering why we've never revisited that. I know there's the Broadway play where Bruce Willis played, you know, the author and everything in Misery, and I am really upset I never got to see that. But I just think out of everything, why are we remaking Firestarter? It just seemed kind of random to me. I don't know, maybe because I'm not a huge fan of the original. Had never seen it up until this last week, so maybe that's just me. But Misery, I think, would be a cool remake. I'm not sure who I would cast because who can top Kathy Bates? Um, but I don't know, you tell me, who would you cast as Kathy Bates' character? Okay, so feel free to stay. It's not a huge spoiler or anything, but I just thought I'd give you the option and leave it at the end of the video so you have that choice for yourself. A lot of people like to say that I spoil movies a lot, so. Sorry if you think that's the case. Uh, I don't really know how else to review movies. So Charlie's parents underwent a medical study while they were in college, early college, and that's how they met and got married. And this isn't like a spoiler for the movie because it happens early on in the film and is kind of explained. And this left them with some powers of their own. So the dad, Zac Efron, has this kind of telekinesis mind control where he is able to uh, control other people and make them do things. Well, the special agents in this movie, let me tell you, they're one step ahead of Zac Efron. They have special contact lenses that prevent Zac Efron from reading their minds and controlling them with his mind. Before they get out of the van to go capture him and his daughter, they're like, lenses in. Then when Zac Efron tries his little trick, you know, tries to control them, this is what the man says. Verbatim, he says, nice try, freak we're wearing protection. And then the lenses give like a little flicker in the light. I wish it was camp. I really wish that was camp and was intentional. If it is, good for them. They didn't make it obvious enough. They had to have that throughout the movie in order for it to be obvious. That was the only moment in that movie really that was super campy like that. And I was just very confused. <laughs> you know, I hope it was intentional. I hope they were self-aware enough. Hopefully they were just going for that 80s cheese um, and I'm just misreading it or I just didn't interpret it correctly. I'm not sure, but it was the dumbest line in the entire movie. And I ended up laughing at this movie and not in a fun way. Like, oh my God, this is so much fun. Like people did with Malignant. I didn't with Malignant, but you know, like that kind of, fun that people have where they laugh at a movie. Um, this was not the case. I was laughing at the movie. That, it just makes me think that they were dead serious with that line because no other part of this movie was like that. Let me know if it was just me, if you also thought that was weird um, or if I am reading it wrong and it was intentional and they are self-aware and they were going for 80s campy. I don't know. So those are all my thoughts on the new Firestarter. I'm just overall feeling very blah about it. I wasn't really excited to film the video. Wasn't excited to watch it. Uh, you know, I feel a little bit of obligation sometimes to talk about movies that I'm not thrilled about. Um, and that's just part of the job, you know? I don't wanna complain about it, obviously. It's not like it's the worst thing in the world. I've seen worse for my job, trust me. But this is one that I genuinely just don't really care <laughs> about. And I know that's kind of harsh, kind of mean. Um, I just don't care about this franchise. Uh, I, it's not even a franchise. I don't care about Firestarters. 
either of them. They're just like there for me. Um, just was not a fan. This did not have anything really going for it besides John Carpenter's score, which I would listen to on my own time because it was amazing. <laughs> but I just don't think the score should be like the best part of a movie and this most standout thing about a movie. But if you've seen it, let me know what you think. Um, this is this is kind of like how I felt when I watched The Conjuring Devil Made Me Do It. I was just, it was just kind of there. It wasn't like I felt really negatively about it or really positively. I was just like apathy about it, which is not a good place for a movie. I would rather feel strongly about it like I did Malignant, like strongly negatively about it like I did Malignant um, than how I feel right now. Like this is just boring. It's just boring. Anyway, enough of that little rant. If you've made it this far in the video, I do want to tell you that I am doing a full, well, I'm preparing a full ranking video of every Stephen King book to movie adaptation. So I'm going to do a tier list one of these days in the upcoming year and I am working through all of the Stephen King movie adaptations. There's a lot that I haven't seen. Can you believe I've never seen The Green Mile nor The Shawshank Redemption? Have I gone this long? I don't know. And I hadn't even seen Christine until a couple days ago. Who am I? Anyway, look forward to that later this year. I would love to hear your thoughts on this video on Firestarter, Stephen King, whatever you want to talk about in the comments. Make it interesting because this video is kind of boring to me, so I would love to have a conversation in the comments with you guys on something a little bit more exciting. So leave your thoughts down below. I hope you enjoyed and I will talk to you soon. Bye.